Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. Today we are going to delve into the world of tactics and we are going to touch upon a topic that comes up I think in every amateur player's life and in fact probably pretty much in everyone's life and that is that very annoying feeling when you solve puzzles in a puzzle book or when you do puzzle rush like an absolute champion and then comes your game and you miss the most basic stuff and you go like why do I not see it in the game and why do I see it when I'm solving tactics? I'm going to try to cover all the answers that are um, going to be hopefully guiding your way through this dilemma and provide a number of pieces of advice and insight as to how to address the problems. So let's kick off. Number one, uh, in order to be effective in puzzles and recognizing puzzles, in your games, the number one thing that you must have is a very good level of tactical pattern recognition. This is square one. If you don't have um, a really noticeable pattern recognition already built in your brain, this is what you need to drill like there is no tomorrow. Let me tell you through a very basic example what I'm talking about and what it looks like. If you see this position, not in a puzzle environment, but just anywhere at all. You walk into the club, that's the first board you see or whatever. And your first thought upon seeing this is not bishop b5 in less than two seconds. And I'm not kidding. Less than two seconds. Your pattern recognition is not good enough. That is where you are breaking down. You need to drill basic tactics, which are based on tactical patterns so that you have this very important foundation. This video is not supported or not done in the sense of supporting this concept. So I'm going to close it off here. I'm just telling you that if this doesn't come to you like that, likely um, I either picked a very unfortunate example or more likely which is what I wanted to say, likely your pattern recognition is not quite there yet. Now, moving on from here, assuming that our pattern recognition is pretty good and we are quite uh, um, well armed with a vast knowledge of these patterns, we are now entering the realm of the real tactics, so to speak, when not necessarily the exact patterns, but similar ideas occur. The other day I came across a very fascinating position in a book that I might review later. And that book is um, Hurtado's Think Like a Super GM, uh, which is a collab between uh, an amateur player called uh, Philip Hurtado and Mickey Adams. And uh, this is one of the positions that the author discusses in the book as a puzzle to solve. And uh, I went through the whole thing. And in the very end of the chapter, I found his comment to be so typical. And uh, I really thought it was speaking to me as a coach. Check this out. He says, I played queen b4 here. Yeah. Not even suspecting it was, quote, why to play and win, quote ends. The funny thing is that if I were shown this position as a puzzle, opposed to playing it, I definitely would have found, and he tells the winning move, as most of the players I showed it to do. Right? So what he's saying by it basically is that I played the game. I wasn't aware that it was a tactic. No one was tapping me on the shoulder saying, watch our tactic. I missed it. Isn't it just normal? To which a half of me as a coach would be like, yeah, we all do miss tactics and it's fair enough, uh, you know, in the heat of a moment, you didn't realize it. The other half of me, the not so pleasant one, will be like, hello, no one told you that there was a tactic. You mean the chess position that you were playing were not giving you 17,000 signals that there is a tactic there? Let me help you out. There is one, two, three, four attackers against a king that has got one defender. If I really want to stretch it, I can count these guys, but uh, that's really iffy. So we have a dominant piece majority on the side we are attacking. We have got a monster knight on c5, the octopus knight that has seven zillion things in its range. And on top of this, we have got an open file onto the king. 
So we have got a king, by the way, that is yeah, castled right into the open file, and we're not compromising anything in, as far as our safety is concerned by doing action here. So actually, the position is really telling us to look for tactics. And then you go like, okay, coach says checks, captures, threats, zero checks, let's look, captures, bang, rook b7, bishop b7, again, no checks, so I look at captures again, queen a7, Hang on, how do they stop mate? Mm, c6. Ah, oh, look at the range of the bishop. Queen b8 mate. Okay, once again. Rook b7, bishop b7. Queen a7. Uh, bishop c6. Queen a6 check. King b8, queen takes c6. Mate on b7 unstoppable. Thanks for coming. GG, game over. I play rook b7. Now. We really need to put these two worlds together, right? The one that, oh, I was in the heat of a moment if I had known. And the hints and the clues that are in the position for us to look out for, which in this case was a king that was very exposed to attack due to the incredibly well-placed white army, um, which we also need to recognize is superior <coughs> in numbers, which is a key component to successful attacks, by the way is that you want minor uh, majority of pieces in the area where you are attacking. So there were the signs here. What I really want to add to this as an example of why he should have looked at aggressive moves is, is that whenever people tell me that they did not think that there was a, a, a puzzle or a tactical solution in the position, um, and they add to it that, oh, if I had known that it was coming, I would have done it. It always occurs to me to bring up an analogy, which is partly really false, but partly you will see the logic in it. Like, if I had known that there was a tactic here, I would have found it. To me, it sounds like if I had known that there was a truck coming, I would not have crossed the road. And you go like, Oof, that's foolish. Well, not really, because there is one thing that connects these two things. And that is, have you looked... And that is the key idea. Have you looked? If you had looked, you would have seen the truck. If you had looked, then you would have seen the tactic. Now, what is it that makes us look is what really important here. And the first thing I already told you, and that's by the way, the key thing to look for is that, do I have the right to look for tactics here? To which the answer is a resounding yes, because of what I already told you. And I forgot to tell you, by the way, that this bishop looks like an extremely clumsy defender that is entirely misplaced on the board on a6. Like, I just don't even know how it got there, to be honest. And that also, by the way, tickles my fancy. But once again, uh, the abundance of attacking prowess that white has on the queen side makes you, you want to look. And to close this part of the video with a very powerful, hopefully, message is, is that my view on these puzzles and, excuse me, positions, I want you to treat it as a position that may or may not be a puzzle, is, is that I think, and it's really, really important that I think we consider this idea, it is a heap safer to assume all the time that there is tactic rather than not assuming that there is one when there is one. Because what's the worst that can happen if you assume more often than not that there is a tactic? You are going to calculate. That's a good thing in chess, because even if it doesn't work out, it informs you about the position, about the motives, the whole shebang, right? So even if there isn't one, there is nothing to lose time. But that is a manageable thing. Right? So if you rather assume that there is tactic, even if there isn't one, you are a heap better off than when we just go like, oh, tactics, oh, that's when, 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 we don't know when, right? So in my opinion, the mentality of always assuming that there is tactics is going to allow you to discover so much more. It's going to encourage you to calculate more, to evaluate more, and to engage with the position more deeply. And you are going to find a lot more tactical opportunities and ideas because you simply don't exclude yourself from the realm of engaging with tactics. And in my opinion, the good way to go about it, which forces you to engage, is to assume almost all the time. Of course, not of move one, but as soon as we are in a complex middle game like this, why not coconut? You are going to gain a lot more than what you lose if you assume there are tactics 
more often than you do by simply finding and calculating more and finding out more about the position. Last thing I would like to tell you about this, and this is equally powerful in my opinion, and this is going to be probably um, a really interesting revel revelation to many of you, is, is that people tend to treat these tactics like uh, some kind of a magic happening on the board that just appeared out of nowhere. That's not how chess works in the vast majority of cases. Admittedly, there are positions and games where <clears throat> out of nowhere a tactical opportunity arises. It does happen. However, the vast majority of tactics usually come up as a result of a very, very clearly followable, visible trend. You have a position, it's getting better, 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 and it reaches a boiling point when there is Boomski, and we are just utterly and completely unaware of the trend because we are so much in the moment that we don't look at what it looked like five moves ago and what it may look like in five moves time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to jump into a game halfway through. Mestel against uh, Dave Norwood. Um, Norwood, rather. Uh, 94, tak, tak. Let's evaluate the position here. Very important point to stop here. Why does completed development, the pieces are well coordinated, looks totally fine, although it is difficult to find an obvious target other than the d6 pawn, which is a little bit too deep in for us to realistically consider it to be our main target. In contrast, Black's development is unfinished, and even the bits that are done are disjointed and uh, just looks like all over the shop. White is definitely better. Now let's have a look at what happens in the next 5-6 moves. Bishop g5, annoying, bishop f6, bishop d3, develop tempo. Rook d8, rook e backward moving, undeveloping, but had to. Queen d2, develop, defend this, attack this, very apparently improving the position. Take, take. The knight is looking very threatening, also has the potential to come back to e4, hit f6, hit d6. The position is gradually getting better and better. At this point, if you are a player who is aware of what's going on in their own game, you are getting already excited. It's a good feeling. And if you don't, then you should be. Like That means that you are unaware of what's happening in your game. Because right now what's happening is, is that we are headed towards a really, really nice position. Or I think it's better put if we reverse it and we go like, black is headed for a cliff and they're going to fall off. Let's continue. B6, really doing nothing. Rook e1, developing a new piece, conquers the open file, initiates tension. Rook f8, yeah, you know what that is. Queen f4, brings in a new piece, attacks d6, attacks f7, the attack is becoming overwhelming. King g7, very apparent pass due to I have no idea what to do. Rook e3, brings a new attacker in, allows white to double, the position is building, building, building. Knight b7, another pass, the knight is covering b7, but totally stupid piece, absolutely useless. Rook e1, fully completing development, all pieces are ready to fight. This is your ultimate moment when you go like, tactics are incoming, right? And this is the spider senses that we like to call, or the chess sense, and that is also something I wanted to mention to you about this position that if you don't think that you are, have the right to look for tactics here, your chess sense, your general feel for positions is letting you down because you should feel that with this many pieces, you have the right to go. And the same a piece here in a far more apparent context, like, oh my God, look at this, right? And now our opponent plays H6. And now we come to the point, the end of the business, when a lot of players would falter by dropping the knight back to any of these squares, thinking neither of the checks or the captures worked, I just didn't think there was a tactic there. At which point, I would like to again refer back that, look at this position, we got this from here. From here on, 
everything that happened on the board was black going backwards and white going forward. Look at this. Going back, going, um, the knight is gonna going back to f8, the knight is going back to b7. Nothing. Like, it feels like we got to play five moves in a row with white, whilst black made their position significantly worse. If there is no tactical solution here, chess is the most unjust game in the world. And of course, white uncocked the beautiful rook e7, with the idea of takes takes, and queen takes g6 is an unstoppable threat due to the six, uh, seven franc pin. It's actually fours mate in six, believe it or not, according to the machine. If you go back to get out of the pin, then bishop takes g6. Any other case, queen takes g6 and uh, mate on h7. Is it an easy tactical concept to find? No, not at all. In fact, it's not really typically a pattern. So finding this is tough. But if you don't calculate your guts out after h6, in the great desire to find the finishing blow, then you are simply not part of this game if you followed my train of thoughts, meaning that we built up the most insane attacking setup whilst they did nothing. That is more of a screaming sound in your head and a flashing red light in the tournament hall than any tap on the shoulder could ever be that, oi, look out, puzzle. This is your telltale sign. And this is far more powerful than anything could be. And I'm going to let that be the closing thought. Do I want to throw in... Oh, yes! I do want to throw this in. Another example of uh, um, how positions build toward tactics. I will blitz through this because I really don't want to drag it out too long. Black sacks upon on C4. Remarkable idea. And we get to this position like this. If at this point you are unaware of the fact that A, your position is brilliant, and two, from here on out, anytime tactics can strike, again, your chess sense and your awareness of what's going on in your board is not good enough. And by the way, the way to improve that is exactly by looking at games like these. Let's see how black turns this into a divine finish. Knight c3, queen f5, a4, rook d8. Bringing all the guys to the party. Black makes it look so easy. Because it is. Rook c8, last piece in the attack. Bishop uh, b3, knight g4. Now the attack begins here, here. Bishop d2. And at this point, black uncooks an absolutely sensational tactic. Would I find it? I would say yes, but only because I would feel that in this position there is absolutely no way that there is not a forced knockout win. And of course there is. Check, I mean, look at this beautiful development, open fast, deadly diagonal, deadly diagonal here, mate threats here. The position is just so rich in tactical themes that if you're not looking for tactical ideas here, I don't know what you're looking for. And sure enough, rook c2, forcing the queen away from what appears to be the most important diagonal on the board, queen h5, and after h3 comes the shocking queen sack, and it's mate. Bang, bang, and it turns out that white can't clog up the diagonal, and this is going to be a mate. And again comes the comment of, I would have never found it. Did you look? Because if you had looked and you did my checks, captures, threats, you would have found that that was the capture. That was a mating one threat. No less. Only move to stop it is h3, after which is just check, 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 checkmate. Now, of course, hindsight is a great advisor, but again, and I didn't do justice to this game because I wanted to get through it fast, but you see that from a regular position with roughly balanced development, we went to absolutely gangbusters, amazing good for black. In the last five moves, black developed like crazy. And white did like bang, moved around the night and just did nothing useful. Like This is what good chess looks like. And good chess almost always leads to sensational tactical opportunities. 
You just need to look for it and assume that there is a tactic and you will be rewarded. I hope you guys will find this at least a little bit useful. Um, thank you for watching. As you can hear, I'm struggling a little bit with my voice, which is why this video was late. But now here we are. Don't forget, please, to sub to like to super thank me if you can. And I'm going to be back with more content soon. Thanks for watching.